Namju Lee is an uh, architectural designer, researcher, and lecturer. He has been the principal of NJ Studio since 2004, specializing in architecture, computational design, and visualization. He graduated from Seoul National University of Science and Technology, and then uh, um, USC Berkeley, and then Harvard GSD, uh, where he did a, completed an, MD, uh, an MDES. Uh, he is, uh, as a researcher, he has worked um, uh, both at uh, Urban Aid Lab at the University of, Te of Technology in Sydney, at Sensible City Lab and Media um, and, and Media Lab um, at MIT, and at the College of Environmental Design, UC Berkeley. Responsible for many things, and I want to thank also Namju for 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 uh, running a workshop this year, along with last year, uh, and making such a contribution to digital futures. Welcome, uh, Ninjay. Oh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, and my name is Nam Lee. Uh, I'm specializing in computation design and visualization and architectural design. And now I'm currently working at ASRI as a software engineer to develop some 2D, 3D mapping product. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the how we you know, discretize the spatial information, which is data from urban context, and how we utilize this data as a design methodology for the urban design practice. So before we starting, um, I want to talk about what is the sort of basic question, you know, uh, the, what is the, our uh, material for our design, basically. So as you can see here, stone, glass, plastic, iron, which is like a most essential material for human history, right? So I think that based on this material, the tool is basically developed based on this, the position of the material or the, the characteristic of the material. So this is the picture, um, the people who live in 19th century um, to imagine what, what future looks like, like what, you know, 21st century, the city looks like. So as you can see here at the time, you know, the rail of the industries become expanding. So that many people think about, thought about like, you know, the rail of the industry gonna change our urban context. Yeah, so, but, you know, we are living uh, 21st century, so it, 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 this kind of uh, event is nothing happened. I, th I guess the most important thing is that uh, what I'm trying to say is that data is the most essential and important sort of the material for design. So here is a multiple uh, sort of keyword that we are familiar with, right? The smart city, AI, machine learning, or edge computing, or parallel computing. So uh, when you read this kind of keywords, what comes in your mind? I think uh, um, the keyword actually made me uh, remind of sort of um, the data. I mean, the first uh, industrial revolution is possibly can be represented in multiple way, but I guess the most essen the, is the essence of the first industrial revolution is, I guess, is how to collect the data, which is IoT or G uh, GPS technology, and how to process the data, like. AI or machine learning and blockchain and edge computing technology. And the lastly, how we apply the insight from the data, you know, as a form of like smart city or a form of some, you know, methodology for design. So data, I guess uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the data uh, for the design practice, particularly focusing on the urban design. So as you can see here, we have data at different scale uh, from the product level to the urban, scale. So with this data, I think the most sense, the most important thing is that how we gonna process the data. I think we basically dealing with the spatial data, right? It's the data could have some position in the space, right? So in this context, I guess uh, the graph and pixel box is most essential data structure to process the data for your design purpose, right? So possibly there could be two different types of data. One data is more about like discrete data. We can we can um, you know take advantage of the graph data to process this discrete discrete data, and also we have like a two dimensional continuous data and additional three dimensional continuous data using box like data structure. And then with this kind of the data and we have a data structure, then we need to make some policy to drive our design process, right? So I call this is a system for wrapping up this kind of these drivers like data and methodology. So there are many sort of terms like optimization that we're familiar with, right? And also we have an automation and agent-based design system, like generative design system. I think this is the also some of a strategy to wrapping up um, the methodology things. 
So this is one of the, my research that I did in the media lab and, and changing uh, place lab. So what I did is at the time, so we tried to uh, like uh, abstract the urban context as a lens of a third place. So that actually, you know, people are, I, I don't know, after COVID-19, <laughs> the human behavior is gonna become a little bit different, but uh, what I'm trying to do is to make a system to capture urban context as a form of a third place. But the most important thing is that how are we gonna deal with the data, right? So in, in, in this com context, I put the, um, the physical data, as you can see here, there are some sort of um, the, um, the network and path and load and tree. And also we have like some slope that characterize your site. And also we have a building, some social or infrastructure things. And on top of it, we try to overlap a third place uh, by searching in you know, a Google uh, map or uh, being, being searched, you can find some, uh, a lot of data related to this other place. And then we can try to, you know, in cap uh, the, um, characterize uh, the city. So for example, like what is different, you know, in terms of this other place between um, uh, Boston and New York, Manhattan, for example. I think that this is the, the other way uh, around of to take a look at how city can be read, what kind of insight we can extract out of this urban context. Um, the second example is a uh, um, um, sort of methodology to again uh, read urban context to um, you know to extract the insight. Um, in that context, what I did is uh, there are two types of um, data set. One is the let's say top-down data, like local government and some organization. They actually uh, intentionally you know they collect the data. And then the other way around is that we have, we are, I mean, human being, human being is kind of the visual language, uh, visual animal, right? So I'm trying to um, make some sort of, um, I mean, looking for the sort of core relationship between the numeric information collected by the local government and other, other organization with the visual perception. So this is also the other sort of methodology to how we, you know, uh, read the urban context as a sort of tool, yeah. Um, this is a similar approach, but at that time I submit um, some um, sort of exhibition with my friends, with uh, Professor uh, Dong Se Kim and, and, and NIIT. What I what we did is try to compare two different um, projects. One is Highline, and the other one is Solo. Solo is a sort of a brand new uh, project which benchmark a lot for the high line. So we try to get the not only um, some visual perception, but also we try to analyze some sentiment analysis like based on the sentence or keyword people upload. So what I'm trying to do at that time is, um, you know, the local government has their own purpose to design, to initiate the project, the solo. So we have like a very old bridge. We're gonna try to um, return, I mean, basically, uh, return this bridge to the people public. So um, after um, um, finish this project, people visit the site and then upload a lot of picture and text and, and then we can pass the information and trying to understand how people react uh, against this kind of a, a monolith-like project. Um, so this is the, also the other way around, uh, take a look at sort of um, um, urban context. And previously, we talked a little uh, talk about, um, as you know, um, some sarcastic approach. But in the computational way, we have a, the other approach, like a deterministic approach, right? So in this project, um, we, I and my partner, we try to make a sort of network um, uh, analysis uh, tool that allow us to understand um, just not, not only the, the network analysis, but also we uh, had uh, some, some of uh, the major system like uh, a centrality analysis and accessibility analysis. And we uh, model the mathematical uh, modeling into the computation way so that we can actually not only try to, um, you know, the calculate the physical distance. There's a lot of types of distance, right, to measure as a cost function, like you know, emotional distance, or physical distance or social distance, we try to try to take in, take a, into consideration to compute what is the more desirable path, right? Yeah. So these are also um, um, the methodology to deal with the urban data. And we are we are 
little bit narrow down here. So uh, we try to, um, in this project, uh, try to do, uh, make a sort of um, optimization for creating a parking lot, which is uh, um, um, the, develop, the developer wanted to get sort of the strategy in Singapore. So the Singapore has a very strict rules. So we're gonna follow it. And then we try to understand the boundary site because which is also part of urban fabric, right? And then some environmental factor take into consideration as a sort of important parameter to generate a sort of optimal solution. Otherwise also we can generate some, uh, like uh, not only best solution, sorry, not, not only best solution, also we can create a, some optimal solution to open the design space for the designers. Because usually what I've experienced is a, uh, if developer really wanted to get the, the best you know, option based on the configuration or based on the constraint, but the designer actually play with some parameter within some particular uh, range of the, um, the result. Yeah. So this is also the urban the data could be uh, involved as an important parameter for designing a building. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the uh, one of the my uh, project. I mean, my thesis project um, to understand the geometry um, as a sort of the creative tool. So the reason I'm saying is because, as you know, the geometry is most important um, element. Even if we design the urban uh, urban um, um, entity, the reason I'm saying is because the the urban is also kept in a abstract as a sort of the geometric the um, problem. So that we are uh, understanding the uh, basic principle of the geometry is really important to process the, the, the special information. Um, and, and also we can, um, there are many ways of uh, understanding and take advantage of the urban, urban data into the geometry uh, and then vice versa, yeah. And this is a the other uh, sort of example uh, to, um, involve the urban data into the design process. So this is the one sort of a project uh, that I've developed before, like um, at the time I, I developed this tool for the landscape designers, because the landscape is pretty you know, deterministic design process because we're gonna plant a tree or a bush, things like that. It has a very you know, clear parameter to predict, right? So that um, we can actually narrow down important parameter, not only the environmental factor, but also we have the data from the ground, like a pH level or like, you know, the water dampness, like, or soil hardness, things like that. So we can actually create the sum of a complex system where people, where designer can play with, well, yeah, also they can like uh, um, um, design their own design process on top of this system. And this system could give us like continuous feedback while you interact with the so this is also kind of opportunity uh, to um, um, take advantage of the urban data you know, for your design process. And also I elaborate this kind of algorithm as a sort of a game, because um, um, at the times my, my nephew and niece, they are really into you know, uh, our environmental factor in the uh, elementary school. So what I'm trying to do is, uh, uh, again, how we you know, create a model, a simple model um, that describing sort of a complex system. When I say complex system, I'm not going to, uh, you know, sort of the, the perfectly, you know, create the, the absolute, you know, system, but I'm just going to uh, make the relationship between the one action can create the other chain effects, like a chain actions. And then the, this chain action can uh, uh, come back to the, your decision making again. This kind of the uh, circular sort of, um, decision making process could could compute yeah um, again yeah the urban uh, the city has not only uh, the have um, numeric data but also it has like a uh, image data that could be interpreted multiple way right and also I'm personally working actually as a uh, the software engineer for the um, um, you know the developer for tooling. So the remote sensing is also very interesting sort of the data set, right? So this is the, um, the sort of remote sensing and then we can actually abstract not only just like a color information, but also we can compute like the relationship between their neighbors pixels. Yeah, so these are sort of the um, um, 
the way or methodology to you know, take a look at the urban data as a sort of image which has like you know, the, the data that you can cook. Yeah, this is the things. And also we can have a, the other lens of the, um, take a look at our urban uh, environment. Yeah, so energy is also really important things. It's uh, um, not only just design strategy, but also like a, we can, we wanted to make a, like a sustainable design and urban fabric. So in that context, maybe um, this kind of a tool is not only just consume the existing data, right? But also we can actually creating continuously the sort of um, pre-processed or like the, the, the data as a byproduct. Yeah, based on your action sequences. For example, if you create some like a building here, that we can simulating how you know the the wind path is gonna um, make and what kind of design decision could could differentiate your alternative in that context. This is also you know important you know um, things to take a in, uh, take a look at the, the urban data. Yeah, previously we have talked about uh, like some environmental data, but I, I guess uh, the human being is also really important sort of data in urban context, right? So um, I mean, in in that in that um, perspective, I think the particle system could be also um, created the other sort of uh, the data, you know, uh, from the existing factor. Like uh, in this um, um, experimentation. What I'm trying to do is to differentiate like two different sort of the um, flow. One is the very static flow, and the other one is like a high velocity uh, sort of um, um, the flow of people on the street. Also, we can apply this kind of strategy not only to people but also like other artificial, you know, sort of um, entity that just like an autonomous vehicle and other um, um, trajectory of the. Um, urban context. Yeah, and we are reaching uh, almost to the last slide. Um, I have more a little bit, but um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the mappings. I guess the mapping is really important and traditional strategy to, you know, um, create or like a uh, immerse, emerging some insight from the urban context. Urban is pretty complex. I mean, it's more a way complex than we thought, to be honest, right? Because as we know more and we realize more important factors actually talk to each other, interact to each other, and create the other sort of data that also work with the you know, um, existing data. So I think the, uh, the mapping is a pretty important thing. And uh, this is one of the, my product I uh, engage in the ASRI. Uh, so we develop sort of um, um, the mapping tool for not only uh, the profession, but also the novice user who has an absolute no background about the mapping. Like, you know, how, how we uh, educate the elementary school or uh, for people who are not like design background, they actually need to know how, how to read, uh, how to sort of uh, understand the urban context by, uh, by making their own sort of mapping things. This is the sort of a statement of this product. But in that product, I did a lot of research things and things, and this is the, some other um, the, the mapping strategy for the designer who have not strong sort of um, computation design background. I guess this kind of tool is actually allow us to uh, take advantage of the data in urban context as a location intelligence. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I mean, the personally, I guess um, I didn't change much because uh, you know, as a software developer, I'm usually you know work with computers. So as long as I'm able to you know access the internet and you know. Um, the table, I guess, and I think this is the place where I can work and stay. And personally, right now I'm in New York. I mean, even if my workplace is in the um, California, and um, I mean, the place become, as you as you mentioned, become like a. Um, it's not important, I guess, because also, I'm basically from South Korea. So whenever I have uh, friends and. Uh, my relatives are able to meet the, the Zoom space. So, I mean, the, after COVID-19, people get familiar with the technology. I mean, it accelerating the people, to push people to, you know, expose to the new technology that basically, you know, connect uh, people regardless of the distance or places. 
I guess that, that one is a really important thing. And also, um, you know, when think about the different types of generation, I mean, uh, the new generation gonna have a little different sort of memory and understanding of the city and places where uh, against what we already have, I guess. So in that context, I don't know, it's, we couldn't imagine or predict, but I just imagine like, you know, you know after several decades, uh, when they become sort of important uh, people in the you know, society, then they have uh, had a little bit different understanding and interpretation, uh, just like the picture that I showed you in my presentation. Because uh, uh, maybe the place is important or a school or some you know, physical contact could be important for our generation. But I guess the COVID-19 is kind of the accelerated the sort of um, emphasize one particular situation uh, where we you know, need to start at home and also the distances become like um, um, meaningless. And also recently I uh, met my friends in the Noblux, which is sort of metaverse world, which is quite interesting because I guess um, sometimes, you know, um, I can play more, um, um, you know, compared to what I really meet my friends in the soul, for example. I think that kind of things could be affect uh, not only our behavior, but also our future sort of uh, physical city, I guess. So that um, the, the architect or urban designer, I think need to um, have the other sort of lens of uh, looking at what the future gonna looks like uh, based on the, the event, I mean, based on the COVID-19 um, outbreak, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Vienna, you reminded me of uh, something in a sense that uh, the conversation I had um, before with the person who is an artist, but rely on the machine learning technology. But the, in the conversation, uh, sh uh, she said like, you know, the, you know in, a, in general, the machine learning is more about like generalizing some, you know, event or some, you know, situation where we uh, like a phenomena as into some particular category or some, you know, um, I mean, the tangible things, right? But, you know, maybe um, autonomous vehicle or other um, important sort of, I mean, some question which has an exact like you know, uh, answer, that kind of things, I guess, uh, possibly the, in general, the machine learning could be, you know, um, sort of optimal solution for that question. But I guess, what about the, we are, we are designer, right? We basically build something that we never before sometimes, right? So and I think in that, in that sense, we need to think about like how we dealing with the minority report for that, the, the machine learning technology. I mean, my understanding of the machine learning is more about like generalizing something and encapsulating into some common pattern or common things. But at the same time, I guess uh, the most essential and important insight is sometimes it's not something from our pattern or something our uh, our agreement. It's more about like a, uh, something, you know, that could potentially work or long run or short term, something, um, how can I say, like, you know, just like a human intuition, a human like a sense, I guess. So in that sense, I'm, I'm sort of also a little um, worry, uh, not worry, I mean, uh, always like a, a take care of a sort of um, the fact that we could miss the minority thought uh, related to, um, I mean, in our topic, like urban designing or something, I guess. In that context, also we need to respect like cultural aspect. Also, this is my room. So I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who, you know, use my room. So in that case that I don't care about like a common sense or a common agreement, right? So, I mean, what this kind of question, how do we, you know, design the network or model for the trained machine, I, I guess. I think this is also the question that architect or urban designer need to start thinking uh, to, you know, um, it's a sort of uh, substitution, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I have a one thought about your uh, sort of question. So, I mean, I'm sort of designer, but uh, software engineer at the same time. So I'm really um, like the technology, particularly the software technology uh, for uh, design, applying design industry. But um, I guess, um, you know, I'm work as a, you know, developer as a full-time, but it's really hard to keep up with the 
develop the speed of the development of the software because uh, individual people you know develop their own like an algorithm or library and then share with throughout the internet and every every second actually you can find something new and people develop something other uh, rivalry to overtake the existing things I think it's really hard to uh, understand the, the or keep up with the speed of the development I guess but I think in that context maybe we can just focusing on what you what we really wanted to do I mean because uh, these these are true right so actually we don't need to understand entire tech tree or entire sort of ecosystem of the tool I guess so I think the most important thing is that what I wanted to you know design what I wanted to you know make I guess so for example like Actually, one of my friends, uh, he asked me, NJ, I'm creating some sort of a paper to submit, you know, the local government to get the project. But he asked me, uh, like, uh, do you have any idea which can possibly involve the 5G technology to the architecture, you know, design industry, things like that. But I don't know, I mean, my understanding of 5G is uh, reduced the latency against the 4G, right? So think about like autonomous vehicle, like uh, the latency is really important. If you uh, delayed like a 10 milliseconds as a latency, and then actually if you drive like uh, your car around eight or nine, 90, uh, 90 miles, the 10 milliseconds is actually it's a lot, yeah. So in that context, I think I'm just keep, keep thinking like what kind of job or task is, which is really important for the, uh, the latency, for example. I mean, in, in that context, I guess the first one is uh, what I really wanted to make and what kind of tool I need, I guess. So that that kind of thing is an uh, um, important sort of a map to you know, take uh, your journey for learning uh, and understanding the technology because there's a lot of like, you know, new technology every day. It's really hard to um, um, keep up with even developers, uh, engineers, I guess. So I think my, my, my thought is, um, I think a tool is tool. So just understanding tool, but at the same time, most importantly, what I wanted to achieve and then what kind of opportunity were you know, um, technologies uh, available for realize my sort of design into your world. I think this is one sort of comment that I saw about your question. Um, also, I have one comment about that question. So um, as a, a software developer, I guess um, there should be some level of engineering things. So probably Apple, you know, once they decide to release their product, like a physical product, they should have a lot of uh, like a API or some add-on or plugin that you can just use it. Just think about like uh, the rendering industry, for example, like 10 years ago, um, I don't know how many people how that like VA. VA is one of the most um, um, famous uh, rendering engine at that time. But not many people, I mean, if I go to the school to have some critique, I mean, people have no idea about what is VA because they use other rendering engine, which is a way easier than VA. You don't need to worry about like other parameters and combination with the light and your object, for example. So, um, you know, Apple is a smart guy. <laughs> They're gonna make it their own sort of ecosystem so that you can, um, I mean, as long as you are, uh, uh, you know, um, you can design your idea in, in the 3D programs such as Maya and Rhino and other 3D uh, commercial program out there, I guess uh, there should be, um, you know, very um, easy sort of um, bridge between the hardware and software, I guess.